In this video, I'm gonna show you how to inflate a view either with Compose or XML. So we're gonna be able to make a choice at runtime to either display the view using Compose or display the view using XML. Uh, the reason I made this, I guess, example was I was just kind of curious. I wanted to play around with Firebase Testing Lab and A-B Testing. Uh, also at Square, where I work, they have multiple different sort of UI toolkits that we can use. Uh, you know, there's classic XML, there's Compose, or there's another declarative UI toolkit that Square actually built themselves internally called Mosaic. And at work, we, you know, use these different UIs. Most of the UIs now are built with Compose, all the new stuff, but they're, they needed to be built in a way that was um, easily interchangeable. So if you wanted to change an old school XML layout and upgrade it to Compose, it needed to be able to, you need to be able to do that easily and be able to revert those changes easily. And I think this is a very, you know, probably a very common question that people have who are trying to move away from XML and trying to move towards Compose. If you work at a big company, you got a lot of users, it's a scary thing to, you know, rebuild an entire screen or UI with Compose and then, you know, ship it out to the users. Because if something goes wrong, you need to be able to press the oh shit button and you need to be able to revert that. So building it in a way that uh, makes you able to press that oh shit button and go back to your classic XML in a, you know, problem scenario instantly is a, is definitely needed. So that's kind of the main reasons why I want to build this example. Personal curiosity, we do it at Square, so I wanted to see if I could do it on a personal project. And I wanted to kind of play around with Firebase Test Lab and A-B testing. So let's just look at an example here just so you have a better idea of like what I'm talking about. So right now I have the same app installed on two different devices, but if I launch the app from the two different devices, uh, one will inflate that the same view using XML and you can tell here because I have this XML text view, view just to like let me know that yeah, this whole view here is XML and this one's using Compose. This layout's very simple. The only thing it does is you can toggle essentially between light and dark theme with this toggle switch and you know, this one's built with Compose, this one's built with XML. And this is configurable at runtime. So right now I have this set up with Firebase Test Lab. One of the devices is getting a Boolean that says, hey, build your view with Compose. And one of them is getting a Boolean that's saying, hey, build your view with XML. On the surface, this seems like a relatively simple problem to solve. And I think that probably if you think it's simple, you're not thinking about it the right way. Because of course you could build like one activity that uses XML, one activity that uses Compose, get the flag from Firebase Test Lab, and then decide which activity to use, and away you go. The problem with that is you'd have a huge amount of duplicated code. You'd have lots of duplicated business logic. Um, depending on your architecture, it depends on what your architecture is. Uh, that will determine how much business logic you duplicate. But no matter what, you're going to have some kind of duplicated business logic. So. It, you know, if you're if you're thinking it's simple, you're probably not thinking thinking uh, about it hard enough. Um, you know, in an, in an ideal scenario, I think what you want to do is you want to have one state sort of object that contains all the information that, that the screen has, and then that state object gets passed into the different, uh, I guess, view implementations. One is Compose and one is XML. So you have zero duplicated business logic. That's kind of the goal of how you want to build something like this. So let's go into the old Firebase console and take a look at what, what I have set up here. So I have remote config enabled over here. I have uh, two users. So those are the two devices that I showed you at the beginning of the video. I have a single Boolean value called Compose UI. The baseline is false and the variant is true. So basically it can either be true or false. If it's true, we want to show the Compose UI. If it's false, show the standard XML uh, UI. So then if we take a look at my code, I have one activity here. And basically, if we if we have the enable legacy Boolean set true, we use an Android view to inflate a classic XML layout. And if that thing is not true, then we use this, you know, composed layout runner thing to inflate a composable. So let's just take a closer look. And by the way, all this code is on Git. There'll be a link down below if you want to take a look at the repository. I'm not going to be going over this in detail. I'm just kind of showing you generally what I did. And if you want to take a closer look, if you're interested, go click the link. It's free. It's just on GitHub, by the way. I'm not like trying to get money out of you or anything. Just go take a look. So uh, let's take a look at these layout runners that I built. So I have two of them. I have a main composed layout runner and a main legacy layout runner. So you can um, 
Yeah, I mean, you can take a look if you at the code if you want to know more, but generally speaking, the compose layout runner has a composable, and then it just takes in the main state. That's the state for the screen, and it builds you know that composable screen. Likewise, for the legacy layout runner, it's a little bit more complicated, but there's not very much to it. You have to you know inflate the layout from the XML layout using the resource ID, and then um, there's an update function where you can see I'm using you know all of the classic XML things that you're used to. We got a switch, a text view, constraint layout, blah 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 blah. Just you know setting those those properties programmatically. So it's pretty simple, and I think this is a pretty effective way to do it. You know, you can pull a Boolean value down from wherever your whatever your company uses. If you're using Firebase Test Lab or some other thing, pull that Boolean down. Depending on what it is, show the different uh, different UI. That's it for this video. Just want to give you a little example about something that I was personally curious about. Um, like I said, I know we we do this at Square. We serve different UIs: Mosaic, Compose, Classic XML. Uh, I wanted to kind of do this in a in a personal project and just kind of play around with it and see if I could come up with something similar. Uh, also, I was curious about Firebase Test Lab. That's been on my to do list to you know have an excuse to go into the test lab and do an A/B test and something like that. So hopefully it was helpful. Again, code will be down below in the description of the video. And before you go. No Coding with Mitch video would be complete without me advertising my courses. So of course, if you want to learn more about Android development, I have many, many courses on my website. Head on, head on over to codingwithmitch.com. My newest course is actually a gift builder. This one is super cool, a very fun app. Some of the kind of main concepts or topics that we go over is, you know, creating GIFs, the Android file system, internal and external storage, Kotlin, Jetpack Compose, Hilt, Coil, all kinds of good stuff. Hey, let's take a look at the application that, that you build in that course, by the way. You get to build GIFs like this one, where the sunglasses slide down onto the guy's face. You can save it. And what do you what would you do with a GIF like this, you might ask? Well, something that I like to do is go to um, the, the internal Slack where I work, and I like to make GIFs for the different, I just, you know, I grab their, their profile picture on Slack and then I make a GIF with the sunglasses sliding down. I love it. I love to do this. Guaranteed laughs every time. Um, but I can't show you the internal Slack at Square, but what I can show you is my Discord channel. So here's an example of the GIF that you could produce with the app. You can see here that I sent it to my personal Discord channel. Make sure to give that a like, by the way, if you're in the Discord channel. Anyway, super fun, super fun course, super fun to make GIFs and, you know, comment on pull requests, uh, review PRs, um, you know, comment on things that people say in Slack with the sunglasses coming down. I love it. Um, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.